Finger Lakes of Western New York, all the way to Sweet Home Chicago. Welcome in to round number five of E-NASCAR Heat Pro League from Chicago Land Speedway. Time to go one and a half mile racing once again. Welcome inside the studio here at the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte. I'm Chris Wilner. No, that's not Hannah Newhouse, in case you were wondering. We've got the wonderful Jesse Punch filling in for us. Welcome. This is your first experience. Are you excited? Yeah, thanks, Chris. I'm very excited. I don't quite know what to expect, but I do know that I'm very excited. And I do know that Hannah leaves some pretty big shoes to fill. So hoping not to mess too much up while I'm here. Well, you're in for a treat because we've had some fantastic racing over the course of the first four races. Should be the same tonight, but it's also been a huge week here at NASCAR as well. NASCAR Heat 4, the cover unveiling at Daytona. Let's take a look at what you can expect from this brand new game. Wow, is your blood pumping? Honestly, just take all my money. <laughs> just take it all. I, I need the game. I left my wallet downstairs, but I'm about to go do that because that is incredible. And as you can see, Stuart Haas racing on the front cover. And uh, we're going to bring in Zane right now in our digital media lounge because, Zane, you were all over this game, this game release and the cover. What's your overall thoughts? Because I'm excited just watching the quick trailer. Yeah, I, I actually, it's awesome. I, I also found your wallet. I pre-ordered like six copies Thank on you. your credit card. Appreciate it. Um, I signed your name, but I don't know if I had the right signature, so. That's fine. It'll don't, work. Don't charge it fraud. I'm just saying. <laughs> it was a business expense. That's all right. The, the cover reveal was amazing. All jokes aside, the weather came out on top, just like we saw in the actual race, but it was awesome to see pro leaguers go out there, the community to be involved, see Kevin come out there and reveal the, the cover, see Tony Stewart on there looking down going, boy, I'm going to run you to a championship. Just the look of determination on there. It was an amazing event and the best part about it is the pro league guys who are racing tonight have already played four they've already got their hands on it they've seen it they've touched it they've smelt it which was weird I'm not saying who <laughs> did it but it was an awesome time so it, it's nothing but an amazingness going forward and we got some sneak peeks coming up maybe a little surprises I, I can't talk about much or I'm gonna get beat up we don't want that. No, no, Please. not at all. For well, your safety. Zane, for those of us who haven't had a chance to, to maybe smell the game yet, what are some of the differences in Heat 3 and Heat 4? It smells like lavender instead of plastic. <laughs> That's the first. No, I'm kidding. This no, is it does going not off smell the rails like lavender, real quick. I promise you. The big thing is graphics, physics, overhaul to the, how the AI drive, and more in-depth career mode. The tire drop-off and how the tires, there's multiple grooves at track. Like we saw a few weeks ago, Bristol was single groove. It's now two grooves in four. Uh, Chicago land here tonight will be a single groove, but in four, you have have multiple lanes you can run. You can come off that high line and run somebody down from the inside. It's it's amazing. And once we get to show more details and people get to play it, the pro leaguers start running it, it's going to be an awesome event and awesome time for everyone because they're going to see the growth as this was a labor of love for the community. On top of that, new sounds. You want to know what it sounds like to be in a stock car? Turn that baby on. Oh, I am so excited. It's going to be an awesome, like you said, for everyone, including us, because, man, Heat 4, we're, we're in for a treat. We are in for a big treat. And let me tell you what, because... And joining us directly from Stuart Haas Gaming here tonight on the pre-race show is the voice of SHG, Jake Morris. He's in the media room, set to go here tonight. I know it's been an incredible week, not only for your, your drivers, but also for NASCAR Heat 4. We just saw a little clip of it. What was your reaction to seeing the cover and having Stuart Haas on the front? You know, it's, it's pretty incredible, you know, having Kevin and Tony featured on the cover and the Stuart Haas racing cars. Um, it's great to have that representation on, on the new NASCAR Heat game, and we're super stoked about it. Let's talk about tonight's race. You've got a Stuart House gaming car on the pole on the PlayStation side, and then your other car on the Xbox side starting fourth. So first two rows are covered. What, what does that confidence bring you uh, for your hopes at an event win? Yeah, we've got a lot of confidence heading into tonight's race, but we've had a lot of confidence heading into every race. You know, we've always, we've been seeming to, to get bit by a lot of bad luck. You know, looking back at Watkins going a couple weeks back, we had great runs going. Um, we got caught up in some incidents, um, just one of those deals. Uh, but tonight, I know that both of our guys, they're focused, they're ready to go. You know, they had a week off, they were able to enjoy their holiday a little bit, but now we got them back and, and ready to get to victory lane. Carrying over the 4th of July on your T-shirt, you got the red, white, and blue gamer controller there. Talk to Elizabeth about your good luck charm. You lost the tie. Is that going to be the shirt that gets it done? 
Yeah, I'm hoping so. I changed jackets, uh, lost the tie, you know, the, the lucky tie with the uh, four leaf clovers on. I had to get rid of that. You know, we didn't do too well after I wore that. So now we're going to represent the old red, white, and blue and see if that brings us some good luck. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Get back to work. We're looking forward to seeing your drivers hit the track. Thank you, guys. It's a little bit of that uh, make your own luck approach. It is. You know, it's not working. Change your shirt. Change your shirt. Get a rabbit's foot. Any sort of luck can help you here, especially at Chicagoland Speedway. But before, before we get to racing, which is coming up here in a little bit, we want to take a look back at last week because arguably, and I'm sorry you missed it, the best race of the year for the Xbox drivers at Watkins Glen. Don't let me talk about it. Just watch the highlight. Who is going to take it home at Watkins Glen? Round number four for your Xbox drivers is underway at the Glen. Green flag is out. In 13th, though, wow, that's garbage. Obviously started at the back. He'll be looking to make his way to the front. Looks like uh, the 95 maybe it cut the track just a little bit. That bottlenecked everybody, and then Dohar just gets turned from behind in the outside wall. And as you can see, he just absolutely cannot believe the luck he's had right now. We are back green after that caution. SHG Slick jumps out to the lead there. We've got one car in the wall, two, three, four cars. We just had absolute melee with contact everywhere going up the hill. Damage, heavy damage on what was your leader with most laps led, that slick. Oh, battle for the lead, and Track Bar just muscled his way past garbage for the lead on the final lap of the race. Track Bar won last week at Bristol, trying to become the first back-to-back -back winner here. Side by side, off the final corner, it's garbage! Muscles his way, they hit the wall, but it's gonna be garbage at the line! Oh my goodness gracious! Garbage comes back on the final corner and absolutely moves his way into the lead over track bar. Yeah, he absolutely sent it in the last corner and Garbage comes from the back yet again, this time picking up the win with track bar settling for second. And Dohar, we saw all those incidents. He's back to third. Man, talk, wow, you said it. It was an exciting race for <laughs> sure. And Garbage led only three laps, but he, he led the one that was important. Let's see what his setup secret was at Watkins Glen. What's going on, everyone? Wow, that's Garbage with you again on another Secret to Success. You guys know the drill, so go ahead and get your cameras ready. And actually, it had nothing to do with the car this time. Sometimes you got to completely ignore the comfort of these things, use up all the real estate, and just send her. That's exactly what we did, and that's what brought it home for us. But remember, send responsibly. <laughs> See you guys. I'm going to have to tell him to trademark that, because I think we're going to hear send it a lot this year, especially at certain racetracks. But I don't think we ever thought we were going to see a last lap corner pass like that at Watkins Glen, especially with just the way that track drives. Definitely not at Watkins Glen. And, you know, anytime there's a last lap pass, there's always an excited person, but you always feel because, you know, there's somebody that's uh, not happy at the end of that run. And one driver who had an eventful time at Watkins Glen International. Two different incidents, and he comes back to finish third. It's the driver of the 88, Dohar, and he joins us now on the pre-race show. First of all, welcome to the show, and I know you probably win the award for best reactions on our in-car cameras with all those incidents. How did you manage to come back to get a podium finish? Um, it, it took a lot. It took a lot of level-headedness, um, a lot of talking down from my crew chief, my crew chief pro boss, talking me down from the ledge, if you will. Um, I was going quite berserk at a couple of times, but he reminded me, one, that I still had a race to try and win, and two, I was on camera. So <laughs> he kept me level-headed through most of it. Well, Dohar, looking at tonight's race, we've seen the best qualifying effort from you this week, starting on the pole. How does that momentum carry you into this race? Um, it's going to be huge. I'm traditionally not a great qualifier. I've never shied away from it. Um, I always have set up my cars more for race runs, but it just was in the car. It's where the car was fast enough um, to be on the pole. It's an honor. Um, it's a real privilege to put our filter time junior motorsports Chevrolet on, on the pole for our first pole award of the season. Uh, it's going to be really exciting. I feel really good about our car. I think we're going to have a really good shot to win tonight. And I definitely have to ask you about being in Daytona. It looked like you had a blast. I know it rained a little bit down there. What was your experience like getting to see those guys up close and personal? It was absolutely wonderful. Uh, Daytona International Speedway is a is an A-class organization when it comes to uh, their facilities, their fan interactions, um, everything. All the people were wonderful. The people of 704 being supportive of us, uh, me and Brian and, and Greg being down there, um, and 
all my friends and my friend who watched my dog that just walked by. Uh, I, it was a wonderful experience above all to, to be a part of. Dohar, before we let you go and get ready for the race, what music are you and your uh, furry friend listening to to get pumped up? Um, I'm always listening to uh, barbershop music, actually, to be honest with you. Uh, wow. It's, it's something I love so much. You know, when I performed it, it was the greatest thrill of my life. Um, and it's just one of those things where it just, it, it kind of gets the adrenaline pumping for me. So I'm always listening to anything barbershop. Hey, whatever gets the job done, my friend. Starting on pole tonight, we'll be watching to keep that 88 up front. All right. Hope to it. Thanks, guys. All right, let's check out this Xbox starting order. Dohar obviously on the pole, but starting next to him on that front row track bar, best average finish and a win under his belt already this season. Pretty incredible. And then there's Garbage. We know what he's capable of doing. Now starting up in the third position, we'll have to see if he can go three, get another win here and get his third of the season. Go fast, Matt, in that sixth position. There's more dog there in eighth and Shell V in 10th. Yeah, we have, he was also down in Daytona with Dohar. And then rounding out your field, Diego, how about J-Mac attack? And number one overall pick, Skirt Bush starting stock on the field. But a driver we haven't talked too much, but his teammates doing awfully well is Casey. Let's find out a little bit more what makes this driver go around. My gamer tag is Casey16, and I drive for Wood Brothers Gaming. I've been playing NASCAR games since NASCAR 99. I've always loved NASCAR. When I heard about this, about the NASCAR Heat Pro League, I was very, very happy because I was like, okay, well, I have a knack for this. My mom, my dad, myself, everybody, my grandparents, my aunt, uncle, they watch all my races every week. The toughest track to drive. Mid Ohio is, is tough, Road America. New Hampshire is also pretty tough. I race on this 4K 27 inch monitor. Sometimes I'll you know go to the mall, go to the movies, but I mean, I'm on five to seven hours plus every single day just practicing and trying to make myself faster. You're gonna have people, you know, definitely trying to do what they need to do to win and uh, but as far as a rivalry is concerned, I don't feel like I have any rivals right now, but that could change. <laughs> and he's got the grin, so you know he's got something up his sleeve. But did you hear that? Five to seven hours a day of practice? I mean, that's dedication. I don't, I don't know what is. That is an immense amount of dedication, but that's what it takes to be one of the best e-NASCAR drivers in the country. That's right. Zane, you know a little bit more about Casey and kind of his driving style. I know we talk all week or almost every week about his teammate on the other side, but uh, Casey's he's kind of a dark horse that you don't want to count out. Yeah, Casey Casey's the, the road course ringer. He's probably one of the best drivers on the road courses. We saw last, uh, last race he qualified second. He's got speed, but he's still new to the setup game. His teammates is actually, actually helping him out with Slade. They put setups together. Slade will send him a setup. They'll make tweaks throughout the week, but it's still a rough time for him because he's still getting used used to how those setups run when he was a pre-setup guy for most of his running career. I actually used to race with him back in 2011, 2012 in a league. So I know how good he is on presets, but we're seeing it now on setups. He's got an average finish of 9.5 right now, currently in, or 9.25 in the season. So it's really rough for him. And we're, hopefully this race, we'll see a top five finish out of Casey. You said he used to race with him. He puts in five to seven hours of practice a day. What is that like as a competitor? Oh, I did. I do. I still do it myself. I play the game probably three hours a day and then race other things competitively for about five, six hours. But back in the day, we probably put six, seven hours in just qualifying practice setups, race setups. The guy's dedicated and we're seeing it right now. Only preset guy to get drafted to show up and say, hey, I'm the best in the U.S. on the console side. Zane, definitely some good insight, and we will definitely check back in with you here in a little bit as we continue to roll on before Chicago. Yep. One team that we've seen consistently strong this season, Levine Family Gaming, but they're still looking for that event win. Let's check in with our buddy HD Motorsports. HD, how's it going tonight? Uh, it's going great, man. Uh, race night. Can't wait to get out there to Chicago and show what uh, Levine Family Gaming's got. I love all the excitement. Where does your confidence lie going into tonight's race? Uh, confidence is pretty high. Uh, during the last night's uh, practice session, car felt great. Could run multiple lines and it just work my way up towards the front once I get up there and just hold it out. We talked to your teammate before this season, the Bear, about being strong on these kind of speedway tracks, a mile and a half tracks. What have you learned from him and what have you guys fed off each other so you can take that next step and get an event win? Uh, man, the Bear is just an awesome teammate, man. We're always sharing setups together, you know, sharing advice. Uh, he's helped me out tremendously, honestly. 
Um, so going tonight, we both got one agenda. That's to get that Levine Family Gaming to get a camera out in front and hold it out there and get that event win. It's been a couple weeks, uh, a, a lot of weeks now, since you've been on a mile and a half racetrack. The last one was Charlotte, but Chicagoland is much different. Where, um, what do you expect, or what can we, I guess, expect to see from you guys tonight? Uh, Chicagoland is one of those mile and a half tracks where the low line is going to be key. You're going to want to be in that bottom line, especially when you got those fresh tires. Uh, once those tire, that tire wear starts to wear out a little bit, though, that's when you're going to start seeing that top line migrate towards the top a little bit, and that's when you're going to see a lot of side-by-side -side action racing. HD, best of luck tonight. Hopefully you'll get that first win, and we'll be watching. Thank you. Appreciate it. He seems very confident. It makes me feel like we could see a Levine family gamer in victory lane. Maybe tonight. calm, cool, and collected. All right, but enough for those guys. Let's talk about PlayStation because they also had a great race, not to count them out at all at Watkins Glen. Let's take a look back at two weeks ago to see who captured the checkers at Watkins Glen. We are underway from Watkins Glen, New York. We are green flag racing. Let's go road course racing. Tight right. Ooh, a little bit in the grass there is you see Fluffy trying to initially take that lead, and he will not get it from Fast Fed. Fast Fed is in a league of his own right now. Through the tunnel turn, Sloppy Joe now creeping ever so close to the lead. Sloppy's been on, on Fed's bumper, and Fed hasn't had anyone challenge him all race. So this might be the upset in that brand new sponsor of that Lucas Oil Chevrolet. We'll see if he can hold position. Wow, yep. you look at Sloppy Joe there. He holds on to it. We'll run him all the way out over the Rumble strip. And Sloppy Joe attains the lead with three laps to go at Watkins Glen. Fast Fed falls to second. The dominant man all day long now playing catch up. This is where he got past last time as he sticks his nose in there. We'll shove him all the way out to the edge of the racetrack. Fast Fed regaining the lead with two laps to go. It's all about that exit speed, and Sloppy Joe gets a huge run off the final corner. The 32 trying to put on a block, but right now Sloppy Joe's got the momentum. He's going to go to the outside. Can he outbreak him? Sloppy Joe looking for that last maneuver. Can he hold on to it? No. <laughs> Fast Fed gets the victory at Watkins Glen, his second win of the season. So move Fast Fed to your first multi-race winner of the year. Wow, who would have thought Rubbin's racing at Watkins Glen? I tell you what, Fast Fed getting the checkered flag, Sloppy Joe oh so close. And then how about fourth place for Nick Jobs? We had Chad Canals of Hendrick Motorsports in the house to watch his driver come away with the top five. Very nice run for him. Yeah, nice run in front of the boss there. Uh, you got Hot Rod there. He's on the pole tonight, finished fifth. And, of course, Fast Fed is also now finishing fifth. They kind of swapped, swapped places there. Yeah, a little bit. All right, <laughs> to wrap up Watkins Glen, because I know I'm just itching to go to Chicago Land Speedway. Zane, what was your overall thoughts of that series between those two? Because I tell you what, two of the best finishes of the year, and they came back to back like that. Chad Cadells. No, I'm kidding. That was, that was He was the key, right? Yeah, that was it. <laughs> he showed up, and he brought some magic with him. No, but the race was Sloppy Nation. Like, Sloppy has been so close each week trying to get a win. And last week, we almost saw it. Like, I'm not kidding. In this control room, people were going crazy to see that battle. I actually caught up with Sloppy after the race and was like, dude, did you move? What happened? Why'd you give him an inside lane? He's like, he bumped me. He hashtag sent it on me. And we got to see that. And then watch Garbage go from two weeks now, from the back to the front, to win it on the last lap. The guy is proving to the, to the world right now that he is one of the best drivers on Xbox, and he knows how to get from the front to the back. Amazing events. And hands down, like I got goosebumps still talking about it right now. <laughs> it was the best race we've seen this season. Zane, do you think that we're going to see the uh, repercussions of some of that hashtag send it in tonight's races at Chicagoland? They're, they're all uh, more bark than their bike at times, so we'll have to wait and see. All right, thanks a lot, Zane. Incredible stuff, I'm telling you. I can't wait. Did they save any excitement for tonight's races? I don't know. Guess we'll find out. This driver out of the RCR stable through absolute haymakers at Watkins Glen International. So close to getting his first win of the season, but he joins us now to preview a Chicago Land Speedway trip. It is Sloppy Joe. Sloppy, first of all, welcome back to the show. And I got to ask you, you came so close. You could almost taste that win. What was last week like for you? Well, again, thank you for having me on, of course, guys. Uh, yeah, it was. we were so close to getting that first win for Sloppy Nation. Uh, just an unbelievable race. You know, I had a feeling Watkins Glen was going to be an intense race if we were in the right position to make moves. And uh, I'll tell you what, our Lucas Oil Camaro Z01, as soon as we got out to Fast Fed up there, uh, it was a battle. It was really close. Uh, I made a little bit of a mistake in the bus stop on the last corner. Otherwise, I think I would have had a shot at him. 
uh, but he drove a great race. Uh, but honestly, it just, it just made me more motivated. It really did. Uh, been working really hard on our car. We got uh, we got our uh, brand new sponsor, Osco, on the Chevy uh, tonight. Osco Camaro Z01. Uh, it's going to be a bullet. It's going to be a green mean machine tonight, and uh, it's just going to be a fun race. But I'm ready to get that first win tonight for sure. Well, Sloppy, you talk about that motivation carrying you into tonight's race, but we're back on a mile and a half track for the first time since the very beginning of the season. And after turning left last last race, how do you kind of uh, prepare yourself to get back on a mile and a half at Chicagoland? Uh, honestly, uh, play racing actually helps. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the way these cars, the way these cars run with the package here, uh, it's going to be a really, really close battle. Uh, doing some of the practice races with some of the other guys, uh, it's all about track position. That's what it's all about. If you can keep your car in the draft and keep it down there on that white line and just hold your hold your groove, uh, you got a shot to win. Uh, it's it's a weird transition going from a road course where there's a lot of breaking points and a lot of strategy to a track where it's nearly full throttle and keeping yourself in that clean space of not getting yourself into trouble. It's going to be a weird transition, uh, but just preparing for it, making sure your car is on the bottom really well, that it sucks up to the draft real well, and it can keep your car uh, just as fast up in the clean air as well. So track position is definitely going to be key for this one. Well, I think you got an analyst gig in your future because, boy, you just laid that out perfectly for us here. Thank you for joining us, Sloppy, and we look forward to seeing that car get from the back to the front tonight. Hey, man, that's a dream, and uh, looking forward for you guys to see that green mean machine uh, driving up to the front tonight, so it's going to be a lot of fun. The green machine. We'll have to watch as he goes to the front as we are ticking ever so closely to the race time as we look at the PS4 starting lineup with Hot Rod. We spoke to the voice of SHG earlier, said he's got a good shot. Pennzoil third, and how about the number one overall pick for PlayStation, Slade starting in fourth. That's right, and Voltage there in sixth. Kyle Arnold in, in eighth, and another JRM driver, Kepper, in tenth. Jermaine Racing's Kyle Arnold is a player that has one top five, but boy, he's hungrier for more. And as we look at the rest of the field, we had a chance to kind of find a little bit more about Kyle Arnold, and he's definitely got an interesting uh, side job. My name is Kyle Arnold, 13, and I drive for Jermaine Racing. I'm an investigator with the local sheriff's office. Uh, I've been doing that for 10 years. Right now, we're standing in my main living room. This is our family room. You can see that's the loud one right there. That's the bad one. Swing over here to my setup. You'll see I have a normal, just a dual screen setup. Got T150 Pro. It's ease of access with console gaming. You don't have to go out and buy it. $2,000 computer and all the extra stuff to get set up and race against people and be competitive. I think my favorite track on the game in the Cup Series would be ISM. Toughest track on the game, probably Darlington. I don't think there's too many rivalries. I think there's a lot of a lot of times some of the, some of the guys run out of talent. I'm not going to intentionally wreck anybody, but at the same time, you get to learn everybody's driving habits and how they drive you. So. It all depends on whose bumper's in front of me to exactly which route it goes, but I'll definitely move him. He's not afraid to use the chrome horn. We'll see if Kyle Arnold can get to the front and another driver that he gets so close, but then something seems to happen, and tonight may be his night. Yeah, I actually, I want to go down to Zane because a uh, word on the street is that he missed practice oh, this yeah. week, but um, it must be for good reason. Knock, Better knock. Be. Who's there? Uh, sheriff Kyle Arnold kicking in your front door. Search and seizure. Let's do this. Actually, actually he's a sheriff of, in Georgia. And what happened yesterday is the guys were getting set up for practice to get a phone call from, from Red. And he says, hey, man, I'm, I'm not going to make it. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm getting myself a warrant about to kick in a door so I can protect and serve. I'm like, so you're not racing tonight then? He's like, yeah, I'm not going to make it. So he was out protecting and serving while everybody else was, uh, you know, sliding and swerving. I'd say that's a pretty good excuse, and we'd like to thank him for his service and all of our first responders because that's incredible. And uh, hopefully he didn't miss out too much on practice because I think he's got a good hot rod tonight. Oh, yeah. He's, he's actually he's got a good chance to win this race. The problem is, is like we see every week with Red, Kyle Arner, he gets caught in someone else's mess. He gets caught in traffic. We kind of heard him vent his frustrations a few weeks ago where he's like, look, if you guys want to get mad at each other, wait until the next live event and take care of it then. But until then, get out of my way. Quit wrecking my race. And, and it's just like LFG. If, if Levine can get some free runs, they're going to show their way up front. Same thing with Jermaine. They just got to make sure they can get clear. And with Chicagoland, it's going to be hit and miss at the end. Playing a mediator in the front. All right. Well, thank you much, Zane. We'll check back in with you in a second because we're going to take a look right now at your total point standings of the eNASCAR Heat Pro League through four races. And as you can see, Penske's led from the drop of the green flag of the season, but right behind them, two wins for Roush Fenway Gaming.
Oh, wow. Only four points separates the one and two spots. But don't forget down lower there, jun Junior Motorsports and Stuart Haas Gaming. Only about three points separates them at sixth and seven. And we look right at the cut line there. Hendrick Motorsports, eight points below the cut line, as long with RCR, just 10. Looking to make above that cut line there before the regular season is over. I mean, it's pretty much anyone's game at this point, and we're closing in on the playoff standings. And Zane, we'll bring you back in because looking at that cut line of draw, uh, of teams, I mean, Hendrick had a great run with Jobs last week. Who do you want to keep your eye on that maybe could spoil the party here? Hendrick. Hendrick right now, eight points out. They could definitely spoil the party. They've had rough races the past few weeks with Mordog not being able to race because he blew an engine before the race at the start, lost connection. And then Job's having to run a rough race. I think he finished 14th the next week he came back for Mordog. So it's going to be a tough battle for them. And then the worst part is Levine. It, they're like Matt Kenzing their way into the race. So <laughs> That's you never point. know. It's, it's going to be a close race to the end, of the, the end of the season here going to the playoffs. And it's all about team. Remember, it's just not one driver. Yep. you got to root your teammate on. Yep. If you're going to pick a, a team maybe that could spoil the party today, who do you think it could be? Oh, uh, I, I want Go Fast Gaming. Fed's been winning these races. His teammate hasn't been pulling out the, the wins that they need or the places to solidify themselves in the playoff. All Go Fast Matt needs to do is finish in the top five with Fed finishing in the top three. They could lock themselves in tonight. Hey, Zane, uh, knock, knock. Who's there? It's our race rundown. Thank yes! you for your help. <laughs> well done, folks. I'll just see myself out. <laughs> well, let's check out that race run. Hey, Zane's, Zane's cracking jokes. I yes, had to crack one, too. Absolutely. 50 laps is the length of our race tonight. Pit window, 13 to 16 laps, but do not forget about that competition caution coming in on lap 23. Absolutely. That'll be right around the time drivers will come down pit road and some strategy play as we have four times wear and full damage just like we do every week here at the eNASCAR Heat Pro League. And once again, Dohar with your 28.9 qualifying lap to take the pole. And uh, Zane, we mentioned strategy, and I kind of sound like a broken record every week. It comes down to fuel strategy and tire management. When are these guys going to pit, and when is going to set the difference here in this race? What we watched in practice about lap 14, lap 15, these guys would start to go down pit road. Some guys tried to push it to lap 17, lap 18, ran out of gas. It's going to be four tires and fuel all the way around. There's no way to take two tires and still be competitive. So it's going to be anyone's race. The hard part right now is knowing when that competition yellow comes out, who's going to who's going to take all four tires, who's going to come out in front, because it's going to be a draft race. The worst part is I got a text message just like five minutes ago while that garbage is out of the race. Garbage isn't racing tonight. His engine blew, a.k.a. the power went out, and they're trying to fix it right now. Breaking news in here to the e Creed Pro League, your last week's winner out of the race. Can you believe it? Shocker. I really can't believe that. I wonder how the rest of the field feels about garbage being out of tonight's race. Yeah, that's true. Well, thanks a lot, Zane. We appreciate it. And we will check back in with you in the race because it's about time to throw the green flag on the Xbox Divisions race at Chicagoland Speedway. No garbage. So go ahead and scratch out your third place starter. Unfortunate circumstances with the power going out. And so uh, everybody else gets to move up a row behind him as Dohar will pace them to the green flag. That's right. A little shifting here on the starting order. You see the bolt in fifth. And quite honestly, you know what I think is garbage? Yeah. The fact that he's not able to race tonight. Absolutely well played. That's garbage for the power going out, and our heart breaks out for him. But as we look back through the field, Jacob Kerr, we talked about him. Definitely could be a dark horse for Jermaine Racing. And then how about Shell V? He won the first race of the season at Charlotte, starting a little bit deeper in the field. And then rounding out the field, Shotgun is the number one overall pick for Xbox in the draft. Skirt Bush, Chip Ganassi Gaming has some work to do deep in the playoff championship standings. All right, and then we also are talking a little bit this week about NASCAR Heat Pro Le or NASCAR Heat 4 that the cover was released this week. And if you want an extra incentive to pre-order, which I don't think you will need one anyway, but if you do, take a look at what you could get if you pre-order now. Wow, under the lights at Martinsville, as if you needed another reason to pre-order. But don't worry, we'll have more on that later on. Yeah, that's going to be incredible. And we'll get, we're going to take a look at a little bit more at the in-game action as tonight's broadcast goes on. But I think it's time to go racing. Everybody's probably sick and tired of us talking. And they want to see some cars on the racetrack. Because, Jesse, this is going to be your first experience calling an eNASCAR Heat Pro League race. Are you nervous, excited? What do you, you think is going to happen here? You know, I'm, I'm very nervous. I will be honest. But I'm also very excited. 
excited, and especially after seeing the recaps of everything that went down at Watkins Glen, it was completely opposite of what you would expect the racing to be like at Watkins Glen. So heading into tonight's competition at Chicagoland, I really don't know what to expect, especially given that this is all new territory for me. That's a great answer. So now you just get to sit back, relax, and let the guys work it out here on the <laughs> racetrack because it is going to be fun to watch. Zane, we're going to bring in here before we drop the green flag because I want to know who should our fans and everyone watching on Twitch and Facebook be following here tonight. The bridesmaid, never a bride, Doe Hard. It's his first night on pole. He's been second place for how long now? This could be the chance we see that boy end up in victory lane. My dark horse of the race, Levine Family Gaming. I know I talk about these guys can win a championship, but they just haven't been performing on the track. HD might actually pull out of a win tonight. Last pick out of the whole group. I want to see more dog. I got to see that stash in victory lane. So more dog <laughs> five for Hendrick. I'm hoping to see that, that Chevy in a victory lane tonight. Thanks, Zane. This seemed like some pretty, uh, pretty reliable and trusty picks for tonight. So knowing as little as I know, I'm going with Zane on this. Yeah, and if you missed his comment about the stash, more dog actually has a mustache that I kid you not. We showed it uh, last broadcast that it looks just like Jeff Gordon from the early 90s. All he needs is a mullet and he'll complete it. So I think he knows what he's going to be for Halloween. So we'd love to. I want to see him once so we can see the stash in victory lane. But again, you saw on the uh, pre-race here a shot of Dohar in his living room ready to fire up the engines here at Chicagoland Speedway. We've got a couple onboard cameras for you here in Xbox with HD Motorsports. Dohar, as you saw, and Diego will be bouncing around. Is there you take a look out of Vermilion, Ohio, JRM Dohar for Junior Motorsports. And uh, I told him in the pre-race show that he had the best reactions from Watkins Glen after being caught in some incidents. Hopefully that does not happen. We don't get to see those tonight or except one, and that would be a winning move. I love how he said uh, he had to be reminded he was on camera because yes. that was going to affect the way that he was reacting to what was going on in the race. So hopefully we might see some 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 like you said some great reactions tonight. Celebratory. That would that's the right, preferred exactly. reactions <laughs> here. Cars on the speedway here tonight as we've got pace lap underway. Again, Jesse, we've heard from drivers a couple said they've run multiple grooves, but Zane is committed to saying the bottom is going to win this race, and that means, well, you can't fit two cars on the bottom, so you may have to move somebody out of the way. So what you're saying is uh, the rubbing is racing right. uh, theme that we saw last uh, two weeks ago at Watkins Glen might carry over to tonight at Chicagoland. Got it. Absolutely, and I think it, it, it's just the precedent of this series has just been ultra competitive. You never know who's going to win. And this should not be any different here as we set to take the green flag at Chicagoland Speedway round number five. Again, if you're just joining us on Twitch and Facebook, we thank you as uh, we hope you're having a great Wednesday evening as we get set to go racing Windy City style for the Xbox drivers of the NASCAR Heat Pro League round number five, taking the green flag and everybody's on the loud pedal. It's time to go racing. Off into corner number one, side by side, Dohar and Track Bar. They rhyme and they're wheel to wheel going through one and two. Right now, a big push from the 14 of Slick. How about that giving some help to Track Bar, who goes from second to first? Dohar again will fall back to third as HD Motorsports works his way to the fourth position. The Bolt now fifth. But off of quarter number four in the lead lap, number one is Track Bar, followed by SHG Slick. And the 95 of, Do of Mo HD Motorsports getting around Dohar as they're slicing and dicing here as we ride back with uh, the Go Fast Racing Machine of Go Fast Matt in fourth, taking a look on the inside, and he's going to try to hold on to fourth as Dohar is going to use that filter time machine around the outside. There you see Dohar very intensely playing. Yeah, he doesn't, I don't know if he blinks. I haven't seen him yet. He's kind of checking the screens here, but it'll be interesting. It's interesting to see a lot of drivers game faces too. Some kind of stick their tongue out, some bite their lip. He's got the stern face look and he's definitely trying to get back to the front because I think a pole sitter should hopefully lead the most laps. And right now he's trying to work his way back to the front. Hopefully lead the most laps, but if we've learned anything from the past couple weeks, all the person that leads the most laps isn't always the one that uh, ends up in victory lane. That's a very good point. As as uh, 48 laps to go, 37 back in front. Once again, your top three trying to check out a little bit, kind of bumper tagging each other into turn number one and two. Battle a little bit farther back, but right now it's all eyes on your front three as we ride on the hood of the Levine Family Gaming Machine. 
Coast Track Bar, as you can see in the lead, as eight, well, HD were riding on board Track Bar, trying to keep that car hugging that white line through the corner, slipped up just a little bit, and right now the 14's trying to find a way around it. This on-camera view really makes you realize how close Slick is to the back of Track Bar, just waiting to make that move the second the Track Bar gets out of his line. So four laps led for Track Bar, and right now he's pacing the field. Your pole sitter led one, and he's dropped back to ninth. So maybe an issue with Dohar in Junior Motorsports, something we'll have to keep an eye on as this run continues still very early in this 50-lap event. But right now your battle for the lead is now a four-car battle as Go Fast Matt joins the group that separated just a little bit, about five-tenths of a second in front of the fifth-place machine of Shell V. And Shell V, again, your opening round winner at Charlotte been pretty consistent, was quiet last week at Watkins Glen, but trying to get into the fray here at Chicago Lane. Yeah, these front four cars have definitely started to, to pull away with it, creating almost a pack of their own, which is going to make it interesting to see them try to pass and make moves then if they pull away from the rest of the field. Riding on board and in your, well, also in his gaming setup here is HD Motorsports. I was going to say living room, but I don't know where that is. He's working the wheel, doesn't have too much wheel into it. Yeah, that wheel doesn't look like uh, the steering wheel on my car, at least. Let's find out a little bit more about what that is exactly from our friend Zane. Zane, what, what's up with that steering wheel? It's a new wheel. <laughs> it's a brand new wheel, the easiest way to say it. Uh, we talked about during Watkins Glen that it was the first race on a brand new wheel for HD. The reason is, and we talked about it make jokes, he blew his other one up, caught on fire mid-practice for Bristol. You're so saying it caught fire. Caught fire, like it was lit, as the kids say. <laughs> They, it was it was fire, my friend. It oh was it was boy. amazing. That was a quality use of lit. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, I don't know if it was the correct use, but we'll, it's fine. So a new wheel, and it definitely doesn't look like your uh, steering wheel in your car. It's a very nice racing wheel that all these drivers. Some again, Jesse, if you're if you're new to this, some are using controllers, some are using wheels. Don't tell me why some pick some or the others. It's a comfortability thing. But if you were driving, what would you use? A wheel or a controller, you think? You know, I've played NASCAR Heat with a controller, and it doesn't go well. So I'd like to believe that playing with a wheel okay. would make me the much better. So yeah. I'm going to stick with the wheel. But don't don't put that to the test. We'll have to hop on board here a little bit later. There's a good look. How about Diego? We haven't talked a lot about him either for Petty Esports. Camera shaking there just a little bit, but you could tell he's working the wheel because it's probably making the table shake as uh, he's all eyes forward with Diego in eighth position, only seven tenths back of the lead as right now Track Bar again completing lap number 11. Nine laps led as uh, he continues to pace the field, but no one's been able to really break away. We've had a four car breakaway for a second, and right now everybody's single file. Still seeing Slick right on the bumper of Track Bar. He's really just waiting for that one move, for that one maybe slip out of line for him to hopefully to make that pass, but um, so far he hasn't been able to do it. So far, Track Bar is just kind of driving out of the rearview mirror, making sure he keeps his competitors behind him. Every lap, as you can see there, he's led so far as the rest of the field, I think right now, buying their time. Because as we talked to Zane in the pre-race show, it's going to be about making that first pit stop right before the competition, caution, catching that, you know, getting that car full of fuel and stretching it there to the end. Maybe you can make it on only one stop. So it'll be definitely interesting, interesting to see maybe a couple stops. Interesting to see who does what as we get closer. Again, lap 23 will be that competition caution. Pit road will close at lap 18. So if you're kind of new to this, drivers will have the option to pit before, but not after lap 18. So now you're kind of talking with your crew chief saying, what's the plan? Because especially with everybody running so close to each other, I mean, the top Really, the top nine are all within a second of each other. It's going to kind of be a who blinks first move for who gets to dive to pit road first. Looking at the 22 there of Shell V. No. Oh, here they go. Couple to pit road. Looks like your leader. So track bar, and he brings a host of others with him too. Looks like Slick, Shell V. Go Fast Matt, Diego Casey, and Skirt Bush, who has started last, all down pit road. So about half the field right now 
on one strategy, which will be interesting now to follow because HD Motorsports and Mower Dog and Bolt, they're all on a different strategy. So there's your man leading the race right now for the first time tonight, HD Motorsports. Pretty interesting strategy, but right now he's going to peel off. He said, I saw the leaders pitting. My turn. So, Jesse, what are you going to get? Four tires? No tires? What do you think? Well, based off of what Zane said earlier, I, I think I might have to go with four tires. Four tires is a good bet right now. Still very early in this race, working lap number 17. But right now, most of the field on pit road or has left pit road, taking over the lead, JRM Dohar for Junior Motorsports and that 88 year pole sitter. We'll let things cycle through right now as he's all by himself. Now he's going to dip off, almost miss pit road. Look out. Don't want to get a commitment code violation there as the 88 pulls off into pit road. So now the field will have all pitted here on with about 36 laps to go. Lap number 16, working 17, taking over the lead as they cross the stripe. Look out too wide down the front straightaway below the white line there. That was a riding along with Track Bar, who I assume will take the lead over as they get around cars exiting pit road. That's the 95 of HD coming up to speed. Track bar again out of McCole, South Carolina. You know, Chris, I don't want to be the one to say it, but we've seen a very clean race so far. So if we're oh, going to talk pit strategy, it, are you? Oh, well, if we're no. going to talk pit strategy, got I a mean, crowd in the booth, and they're like, I can't believe she just said that. Oh boy. I know. I have a lot of eyes on the back of my head right now. <laughs> no, but I think it's important to note. I mean, if we're, if we're going to talk about strategy here, we have to remember that we've run very clean for the first. Uh, laps here so we certainly have J Mac attack in the lead I can assume he did not pit so we may have one car still that three that has not pitted he'll try to lead some laps here as right now he'll just get out of the way because there goes track bar as well as SHG slick on newer tires just blowing by that three machine so move the 37 back to the front and a quick note about track bar it's pretty interesting he's actually a somewhat and he, he calls it part-time he's a spotter actually believe it or not loves to spot for the past super late model series richmond raceway so gets his racing fix here and then does it for real as a spotter so pretty cool to see the different backgrounds of some of these drivers here as we watch the battle for the lead again stuart haas gaming all over the back of the 37 you heard from the voice of stuart haas gaming in the uh, pre-race show jake morris he said his drivers fired up and Slick, I know, is trying to get himself into victory lane for that team and inch uh, closer toward that playoff spot. You know, it's interesting you talking about, about Track Bar having spotting experience. I wonder how that helps him now, just like I wonder with a lot of the other drivers, how maybe being a police officer yeah. uh, as your part-time helps you on the track or, or even being in a barbershop quartet. I wonder if any of those play factor in uh, making you a better driver. I'm sure you can learn something from almost anything <laughs> that these guys do. I mean, we have CPA, like accountants, and, and like you said, a sheriff. I mean, they come from all different backgrounds. But again, we want to remind folks that maybe are just tuning in or, or new to this, they are professional drivers. They get paid. This is a real gig for them, and it's something that you know NASCAR and all the teams are excited about, and we are excited to bring it to you because this is a new level and a new experience of console gaming that's never really been done for NASCAR. So props to everybody here. But again, these guys, as you can see on board with Diego, eyes forward, and it's, uh, but again, top two now starting to check out, but pass for the lead here, Jesse. Can he do it? He's been trying all night. Slick down to the bottom in turn three. That's where you want to be in the 14. Going to inch his nose just in front of the Scots 37, and it looks like he'll use the run down the front straightaway, and so move Slick to the point, leading his first lap of the day. And Track Bar, who was a bridesmaid last week, now back to second here, working lap number 22. I have to imagine, given the run last week, we're going to see a little more of an aggressive move from Track Bar as we come down to the final laps of this race. He's not going to let that happen again this week. Yeah, finishing second, I know he's a guy that says it stings, and so he's trying to do everything he can. We're approaching that competition caution for those of you keeping track. Should come out here at any moment, as again, that was a big move, though, for Slick to take the lead before the caution. Could be interesting strategy, especially if somebody may try to top off at the back and get of sequence as we take a look here at a good battle that's the 18 of the bolt and the green interstate machine leading a train on the bottom hendrick motorsports left on the outside of more so more will get shuffled back bolt bringing shelby with him as here we come to the competition caution and it's going to be slick for stewart haas gaming keeping the lead as the yellow comes out 
with 28 laps to go. How about that pass? That was pretty clean. And that's how you get it done around here at Chicago. That was a prime example of, of patience and it finally paying off and could pay off big. It certainly can. So the drivers are going to reset here. We'll get an update if anyone takes a trip down to pit road. I can't imagine too many well just because many just completed service here as Diego will check the chat room make sure everything's going okay he's got the headset on again these drivers can talk to each other they're talking to their teams just like if they were out on the racetrack so Chino Hills California and we talked to Diego I think after week one too he may actually believe it or not Jesse made the drive from Chino Hills all the way to Charlotte for the first race wow like I mean incredible I wonder how many hours that is. So Diego, we're getting word, was asking, go fast, Matt, here is on the bottom. What was this? So that's a replay of what happened between Diego and the 43 and go fast. So interesting uh, to see the drivers starting to call each other out, saying kind of what happened here, guys? Still pretty early in the race. Definitely got some contact, but we're back under the green flag here at Chicagoland. 25 laps to go for your Xbox drivers, round number five. Two by two as Slick now falls back to second. So move the 37 back to the lead. Not sure if he got out of that bottom groove, but right now he's hung out to dry because here comes the bolt. How about the 18 for Gibbs Gaming? They're trying desperately to get into a playoff position and having a good run so far. But you can't push the issue here, right, Jesse? I mean, you can't, you can't get too aggressive too early. You can, but it might not end very well for That's you. very true. That's very true. <laughs> so track bar, again, pacing the field as we click laps off here at Chicagoland Speedway. Whoa, little wiggle there from the 14. He gets high up in the marbles. He'll go back from third, make it all the way back to sixth and maybe more. That 18 was not moving. He was keeping <laughs> that second spot and he was ready to make that move for the lead. Like Brad Keselowski said, Daytona, I'm not lifting. I'm not lifting. How did that How did that end up working for him, though, unfortunately? Yeah, it didn't work out too well. But hey, I don't think he lifted then either. I so. don't think he did. <laughs> Riding on board and in his living room, that's Dohar out of Vermilion, Ohio. I don't know who he's talking to, but I got to admit he's, or I got to believe he's talking to his crew because that car was on the pole and now he's moved his back way back to sixth, trying to fight his way back to the front, still about half a second back of the leaders as we look back from Dohar to J-Mac attack in the three. And you can almost see the, the confidence kind of dwindling on his face as every time we check in with him. He laid down a fantastic lap here, and he even admitted in the pre-race show, I'm not the best qualifier. I don't like qualifying, but it worked out best for him. He works on his car during practice sessions for race setup. But right now, he's got some work to do as they're, again, single file. Everybody all the way back to eighth within seven tenths of a second. HD Motorsports, you see him there. Definitely frustrated. He's now in 12th. Let's let's get more from Zane on why he's sitting in 12th place. Zane? This is kind of what we talked about before, guys. He needs a clean race, and he got bumped. He got knocked right through the grass at the start of the race. Now he's in no man's land, sitting back in four, uh, 13th with Casey around him and Slick. So maybe Slick's going to come back and pick up his buddy, but I don't see that happening. It could be at the end of the day for uh, HD there. How's that looking in the chat, Zane? Are they uh, are they being nice to each other? In, in the chat, no one's actually really talking. You got Bear, though, talking his teammate up, getting over the radio, going, come on, man, you got this. And Bear's just a big old Pooh Bear, man. <laughs> was he was wants that his your teammate. Bear impression? I <laughs> it was it. a very bad Bear impersonation. <laughs> it's going to get better as the season goes on. Yeah, I was going to say, you need to maybe work a little Hi, bit. Hi, man, don't judge me. <laughs> oh, boy, Zane, we're going to cut his mic here in a minute. Uh, we got four races left in the regular season yeah. to work on that. So interesting for HD, and again, that's just a big deal about how staying in this pack, or how much of a big deal it is to stay in this pack here in Chicago, because like, he's back to 11, that's three seconds, 3.1 seconds, and it's hard to drive that way by yourself all the way to the front without some help. It'll be interesting to see if Casey and him can work together, and SHG Slick, who again, Slick, got bumped out and shuffled to the back, and now he lost the draft. Draft plays a big, big uh, dividends here at Chicago. 
But again, your leader, track bar, less than a tenth of a second, though, so that lead is shrunk because Go Fast Matt and the Bolt are coming. Bolt right now in second, driving a very low line off the corner as track bar sw uh, swoops out to the wall there a little bit down the back straightaway. But the Bolt started fifth, currently second, and he has a bunch of Gibbs merchandise. Kyle, uh, he has a Kyle Busch cutout in the Dan Cave, because his name's Dan, <laughs> and it stands over his shoulder. It's almost like a watching eye. Kind of like Kyle giving that juju. Right. It's, it's like the angel over the shoulder yes. that gives you the advice as yes. you as you play. Yeah, you talked about good luck. Maybe Kyle's is good luck. There it is. All right, coming down to 15 laps to go here at Chicagoland Speedway, all tame for the time being as we ride down the left rear tire of Shell V. Charlotte winner, part of Team Penske, who has an event win and is locked in. He started 10th, as you can see there, up to fourth. So a solid run for a guy we haven't talked much about this week. He was pretty quiet at Watkins Glen. But again, he, like most of these drivers, talked about being consistent. It's not about being the flashiest, like garbage. Unfortunately, is not with us here uh, this week due to some technical difficulties. Right behind Shelby Dohar, working his way back up to fifth. He fell back as far as ninth at one point in this race. Yeah, really impressive run from Dohar, like you said, being able to work his way up through the field. And um, one of my favorite things, though, about that shot of Dohar is his, his choice to sit on the floor and not the couch behind him. You know, that's interesting. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. The floor may be a little better for posture. It may be comfortable. A little more stable, a little stable. more stability there. Yeah, I don't he blame can, him. I like sitting He can on the floor lean too. over if something goes wrong and bang his fist on the floor. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully, though, yes. nothing goes wrong because yes. right now he's still sitting at first. And if last last race uh, doesn't repeat itself, then maybe he'll find himself uh, the winner. We'll have to see track bar because track bar is going to peel off right now. Another pit stop for your leader. Track bar will take look like go fast Matt with him. We've got two. The bolt also hitting pit road. Got a little contact on pit road, man. Careful, gotta watch your speed. So Shelby will take the race lead 10th to first as we start to see another pit strategy play in the hands here at Chicago, and now here comes the back half of the field, including Shelby, who relinquishes the lead. That's Kyle Arnold in the 13. Working lap 41, so just 11 laps to go. Coming to 10 laps to go here, as the man on the racetrack that we're watching is Dohar. Rest of the field catching back up after pit stops. We'll have to check in with Zane here in a little bit to see kind of what the strategy play is. As you can see, now the 88 will dip onto pit road. So Junior Motorsports will pull that 88 back down pit lane. He'll get some service, move the leader. Now back to, I believe, is going to be the 95. Still cycling through here, but definitely interesting to see again how when one driver makes a move, everybody's got to come because you kind of, you don't want to be completely different because sometimes that won't work out in your favor. Exactly. There's strategy, and then there's not exactly understanding what's best for the field. Right, right. Track bar, rim riding, and the Scots with 1,000 there. As they've got an event win as well. So track bar is trying to add his name to victory lane. So as the field cycles through, it looks like Track Bar will have a bit of an advantage here on second place. And that's going to be Go Fast Matt, only six tenths of a second. So I know that's not a lot, but it's been only about a tenth or so between the top few cars. Right now, it's six tenths back to Go Matt, Go Fast Matt. The Bolt, about a second and a half back. So you can see how when pitting kind of Track Bar is able to kind of control the, the play out of the race by when he heads to pit road. I don't think the Bolt had a good outlap because 
He was a lot closer there, but his outlap now puts him about 1.3 seconds back. Nine laps to go at Chicago. Jesse, can I, does anyone have anything for, for track bar? I, I, it's hard to believe so. I, at this point, I would say no. He seems to kind of be running away with it uh, very confidently at that, too. I, well, I will say, though, watching the numbers uh, go fast, Matt, is uh, dwindling that, that um, difference there a little bit. He's slowly approaching his bumper, but uh, with only eight to go, I don't know if that's going to be, if we're going to have enough laps for him to make that pass. Also interesting to see that track bars lap times dropped off just a little bit. They were all running about 28 seven, 28 eight. He's now in the 29 second range, maybe trying to save those tires just a little bit. But here comes go fast Matt. He just shot from about three tenths back all the way to track bar. And Zane, what are we hearing about your leader here? Possibly saving some tires or, or is that car falling off a little bit? He's holding on for all dear life. Because <laughs> right now he's got to go fast. And that's go fast Matt, which we talked about the start of the race. He's got to get a win tonight, and I'll tell you what, in practice last night, he was the strongest car on the field next to Track Bar and Dohar. We're watching him on the bumper of Track Bar right now. This could be the race, fellas and ladies. I apologize, Jeffy. <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean to Come insult on, you. Man. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm into the moment right now. They're racing toward it. Our back, uh, nose to tail. Like, it could be anything at this moment. So keep an eye out for Go Fast Matt. He had the best car in practice. The boys hustled him during practice and told me there was a competition or a caution, and I threw a caution when he had the lead, and he lost it. So he's coming back to win this race. Zane, yeah, I'll let it slide this time. As long as you can give me a little insight, though, because I'm wondering. So Track Bar, although he is in the lead, you said he's holding on for dear life. Do you think Go Fast Matt is maybe more confident right now and that he's going to be able to make that pass and, and pull off what we saw at Watkins Glen? It's, it's a mile and a half, and the way this, these cars handle, it's all about the draft. He's in the perfect spot right now to sneak around on the last lap if no one comes around, if Track Bar doesn't put the block. Like we talked about earlier, Kozlowski said, I'm not lifting. We're going to see Matt. Matt's not going to lift when the laps come down to the, to the wire. Yeah, this is shaping up to be an incredible race to the finish. Four laps to go here at the stripe. Track Bar, go fast, Matt. And then it's a second back to Dohar, who came back from starting on the pole back to ninth. Now he's third. A second back, and he's got a lot of work to do, but he's got a train coming as we ride high above the third, fourth, and fifth place machines. Dohar, Shelby, and Kyle, Jacob Kerr, excuse me, Jacob Kerr in the 13. And they're catching this group because it was a second. Now it's about eight tenths of a second. Really makes you wonder about those two lead cars and the status of, of their tires right now. Definitely interesting, and if, you know, Zane said that the leader's hanging on for dear life, if three laps still is a lot of time to be hanging on and to not make a mistake. And right now, everyone has caught the leader of Track Bar. Well, as you were riding on board there with Dohar, they're right there. They have now crept into the frame, and they smell blood, and that blood is the leader, Track Bar, who's got to do everything he can to keep everyone behind him. Two laps to go at Chicagoland. Oh boy. Keeping an eye on the top two. Here goes fast, go fast Matt. Go fast racing has to be on pins and needles right now. They've been so close to wins. Could tonight be their night. White flag is out for track bar. One lap to go here at Chicagoland Speedway. Top four, throw a blanket on them. But Track Bar gets off the corner pretty nicely. Looked like Go Fast Matt may have tried to get back just a little bit, get a run going into turn three and four. He's got a hefty run of speed here. But right now it's all Track Bar. He was a bridesmaid last week. Can he hold on? Yes, he can. Track Bar gets the win at Chicago Land Speedway. What a race to hang on for the 37. JTG getting the win. Oh man, Jesse, what'd you think? I thought Go Fast Matt had a shot. He kind of laid back a little bit. Would you have done the same maybe to try to get a run? You know, I, I can't say, speaking in the moment, but I, I will say I thought he might have had it too. And I, I kind of thought he might have been a little more aggressive there at uh -huh. the end, but ultimately uh, it was Track Bar that is the winner here. And maybe we'll see um, how that uh, makes up for last week. Track Bar gets the victory. That's his second victory as he won at Bristol 
during round number two. All right, here's a look at your unofficial results. Again, unofficial, but track bar, your victor. Go fast, Matt, a hefty run there at the end. Just wasn't enough for second. And then your pole sitter, Dohar. Boy, we thought he thought tonight was going to be his night. Comes home third. ACHD Motorsports ended up in seventh, and Skirt Bush, he started 12th, finished 10th. Yeah, we thought Hot Rod was going to have a little bit of a better day, but Skirt Bush comes from last place. Diego, we were riding along with him a little bit. Just didn't really have the speed to get up front. Same with Casey. Mordog was up there and got shuffled back, and then J-Mac Attack rounds out your field. Again, actually, last will be garbage. Did not take the green flag tonight. So again, another two-time winner, and we'll welcome in here to the post-race. Track bar, a victor here at Chicagoland Speedway. You've got to feel good about that one, especially because Zane was telling us you were hanging on those last few laps. Tell us about it. Yeah, um, for whatever reason, after we pitted there, I was having problems with my actual throttle pedal on my on my actual steering wheel for whatever reason, and went as fast down the straightaways, but. I started using my big toe there and just pulling up my brake pedal and everything, see so if that helped, and it managed to hang on for the last few laps there to keep them guys from catching it. Track bar going, uh, knowing what happened at Watkins Glen, what was going through your mind when you were coming around that final lap, knowing that you were holding on for dear life? Just knowing a lot of hard work paid off again. Like I said, I've, I've been super fast every single race. Just had some unfortunate circumstances the first few races, and Watkins Glen was just being patient at the beginning and going for it there at the end. And I pretty much gave the race away to garbage on a silver platter, just hitting the curb, and then he took advantage of him. And I don't blame him what he did. I would have done the same thing. But, I mean, I can't complain. I mean, like I said, I got two wins, a second-place finish. I mean, there's nothing to complain about my season so far. Absolutely. Definitely a great drive here tonight. Congratulations. Now go cheer on your teammate. All right. 10 that thank you. That's Track Bar, your winner tonight for the Xbox drivers. And before we head to PlayStation, I know we've talked all night about the new NASCAR Heat 4. The cover released this week at Daytona was phenomenal. We'll get you another look here inside the game at what it's going to look like when you get behind the wheel here this fall. like we were in the game, huh? I think that I was forgot to breathe that whole time. <laughs> I know. It's, 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 you can breathe. It's okay. Another great look at NASCAR Heat 4. You can pre-order. And I think I saw a track map on the bottom left-hand corner. Did you see that? That's what it looked like to me. It actually, it was really cool. Incredible stuff that 704 Games is doing. And again, yes, that was a track map. That'll be one of just the many new features in the game this fall. All right, here's your starting order as we get set to drop the green flag on the PS4 drivers. Stuart Haas Gaming on the Pole position with Hot Rod and then the Bear coming in second. How about that? Looking at your six through 10, Kyle Arnold, Kyle Arnold there at eighth. We talked a little bit about him earlier. Start calling him the Sheriff. The Sheriff, I like that. Might be a, a gamer tag for next season. Rowdy, then Fluffy, Sloppy Joe. We spoke to him. He was last week's runner up and he thought he had a good shot at a win. And boy, he put on a great race, didn't get it done. He's gonna have to come from the back in that RCR number eight. And then Job's first top five, he will ride shotgun on the field. As we get set, drivers are on the racetrack for their pace laps. Well, let me tell you, we saw the strategy play out in Xbox. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think the same thing? Do you think some of these drivers kind of paid attention to what happened there in Xbox? Oh, I absolutely think so. Given what I know now about how they, they share setups and they share strategy, I definitely think that they have a bit of an advantage having the opportunity to watch the PlayStation race uh, before this one. 
I know teammates like to cheer each other on. We talked, uh, Zane mentioned in the Xbox race that the Bear was cheering on his teammate on the chat saying, come on, buddy, you got this. And uh, it's really neat to see because, again, folks, if before we go to green, this is a team sport. You got to root on your teammate. Best combined or your combined finishes get you points. As we get in the race toward the playoffs, this is the round, the fifth round. Three more rounds after this before we start cutting them loose during the playoffs. Two drivers each week, two teams each week will get eliminated. So it's all about setting yourself up for the postseason as we get set to go and drop the green flag. It's racing at Chicago for PS4. Side by side, they go down for second, third, fourth. But right now, that Stuart Haas gaming machine, Hot Rod, said he had a hot rod, and he's trying to prove it here early on, leading this first lap as they're getting pretty dicey back there around Parker in that 42 as well, Kyle Arnold and Mike RPM. So lap one leader, again, is Hot Rod as they dive into turn number one. That bottom groove, we mentioned it in the pre-race place you want to be. It was the place you definitely wanted to be in Xbox. We'll see if somebody can make two grooves out of this racetrack to get a win. Right now, your front four, now five, six, all single file. A couple cars side by side there in the back. That looks like Rowdy. As everybody dips below the white line, remember you can do that here at Chicagoland. It's not Daytona. You can drive below the white line. There we see Sloppy Joe, cool, calm, very collected. He almost looks like he's tired. I know, right? <laughs> You're in the game, buddy. You're, well, he's got work to do. He started uh, back in 13th position, still there, but he's only 1.4 seconds back of the lead. Right now, just trying to get through the first few laps, kind of size up the competition, see what he's got, is right now your battle for the lead. Here comes the 95 of the Bear. Said he's the best on mile and a half tracks, and he's going to try to prove it here tonight. like a pass for second. Nope, Slade's going to think better of it. That white car third in line as we ride on board with your leader, Hot Rod. One event win, or one race win this year as he looks back to H, or the, the Bear, HD's teammate. Now on board with the Bear out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Every time I talk to him, I have to say, roll tide. Josh Harbin. Well, you know I went to Clemson, right? I did not know this. <laughs> so but no roll ties on this spot. Now that I do, I got to really watch what I say. Well, guess what? If he wins, you're not doing the interview then. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm, I'm OK with that. <laughs> no, I'm just giving you a hard time. We can bring that rivalry back. That's pretty, that's, <laughs> I, I love it. The Clemson, great school. And I can and I can share in the love for Orange because I went to Syracuse. So Perfect. There we go. There we go. As long as it's not Crimson, we're on the same team. Nope. <laughs> Six laps led for your race leader, Hot Rod. Stuart Haas Gaming. And the Bears second, Slade, number one overall pick. These drivers were all drafted in March at Phoenix ISM Raceway. They held a special draft, much like an NFL draft or an NBA draft, where each of the 14 teams picked their Xbox and PlayStation driver. So Slate was the number one pick for Wood Brothers, and they had a good pick. He won the opening round. He's been in the top 10. Here comes the Bear for the lead. Looks like he's going to be successful oh, in that out. pass. I, I almost spoke too soon there. <laughs> <laughs> they got awfully close before they kept it clean, and Slade's going to go with them in that spin 21. So the Bear's going to take that inside groove and we saw this happen in the last race where the outside driver almost gets freight train. The draft does play an effect here at Chicagoland on NASCAR heat. So that inside groove is going to try to roll with the camo. How about the camo machine? It's pretty cool looking hot rod there. The 20 special paint scheme. That's voltage in the TRD. Can't see his car. Where is he? <laughs> That's, that's a terrible joke. That, that's all right. <laughs> I'm really not good at it, so. It's OK. Between you, me, and Zane, one of us will, will spit out a good one tonight. There, there we go. Oh, caught 
attack there. The eight machine got a little bit high, but we stay clean and green. That's the other thing mentioned too about last race. They kept it pretty clean. And right now they're getting awfully comfortable with each other, racing close, but keeping the fenders on. That is the difference in this race and last race, uh, at least where we are so far in the race, is they're much tighter in this race than they were. At this point, we'd already seen some some kind of smaller packs uh, spread out, but but no, they're they're very close to each other. They're they're racing hard. Yeah, the top four there and Xbox kind of pulled out just a little bit right now. You can throw a blanket over almost the whole field. We rode on board there with Sloppy Joe, broke out a little bit of a smile, and rightfully so. 13th now to 8th with only 12 laps in. So a good run for RCR there in that number eight, trying to gain some major points as we ride on the hood of Stuart Haas Gaming's hot rod as he tracks down the 95. You can see the 95 of the bear kind of has a little bit of a wider entry, trying to keep that car on the bottom of the racetrack. May have a little bit of a tighter race car. Tight means it doesn't want to turn. Yeah, it's all about consistency here in the Enasker Heat Pro League. These drivers, they talk about it week in, week out, hitting their marks every lap. They've got spots on the racetrack. They like to know when to turn in. And we're side by side for the lead. Hot Rod the Bear. Bear outside, trying to hug his way around the outside. But look, don't look now. Here comes the two of Penzoil. I don't know where he came from, but the yellow two out of Penske Flirting with that outside groove. He had it stuck for a while. He's going to tuck back in line, but he may try it again here for second. And all the bear do, if the bear can do right now, is just look out his rearview mirrors. We got pit stops now. Hot Rod pulls off the racetrack and goes down pit road. So get the 95 back to your leader. Penzoil will stay on the racetrack, but here comes about half the field. Parker, Slade, Fast Fed, Jobes, Kyle Arnold, Voltage, all down pit road. So here we go again, and this is about that time, lap 15. It looks like Hot Rod almost realized he wasn't quite going to get there on that pass, and last second decided to pit now and, and let that strategy be the benefit later on. If you're watching from home, the blue marker on the side of our running order indicates drivers on pit road. So if you're trying to keep track of who's making pit stops when, it's a great way to do it. As we ride on with the Wendale Juniors ride seven of Keffer. Jerem Keffer, we talked about in the pre-race show, starting toward the back. He uh, had a good, nice week-long vacation. The local boy out of Charlotte, North Carolina, was out at Myrtle Beach for, I think, a week, and he pretty much posted a video on his Twitter every day, and it just made me even more jealous every day that he was on the beach, and I wasn't. Well, That's hopefully. just mean. I, isn't it? <laughs> I thought about calling him out, but no, he had a great time with his family, looked like fun. Glad to have him back here. Round number five, as he's got that Chevrolet on the outside. now. Looking back at Slade, round one winner at Charlotte. We talk about how many hours a day these guys put into just practicing to get ready to race each week. So, you know what? I'll give him a week vacation. I think he might have earned that. Absolutely. <laughs> vacation well earned. Trying to get Junior Motorsports into the playoff contention, too. I know they're marred back just a little bit. So, hopefully, a little refresh and recharge will get them going as we had some damage there, as we saw before against Slade. But Slade right now, there's the damage on Keffer. So we had an incident. I don't know if it was getting to pit road, but we have some damage on the seven. And we also had damage on another car. Slade continues to lead that car on the outside there. I want to say it's either the 47 or 17. We saw slight contact on yeah. pit road in the last race, so it wouldn't surprise me if that's what had happened here. And again, four times wear and full damage, so it doesn't take a whole lot for these cars to show wear and damage, so definitely even some what we would call minor contact could have an effect on these race cars. You can see there, great shot. This game gives you so many angles of uh, ability to view, so it's incredible. You can't do this in real life. You can't ride on this far away from drivers on their hood or on their quarter panel, so pretty cool stuff. This really is, especially for me, for someone who doesn't do this every week, this really is 
an incredible experience for a race fan to get to to feel like I'm in the action. And, and here's a guy who's in the action, but isn't isn't quite showing the same emotions that I am. But he had a smile early. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering why his smile went away because he's going up the leaderboard here. He's up to fifth. That's Sloppy Joe we're talking about there riding from uh, his office, we'll call it. Got the RCR logos decked out, NASCAR heat poster. I don't know if that's a tire rendering on that piece of paper. Interesting. We'll have to ask him about it if he wins. I want these guys to come design my my house. Oh, I, I love all of their decor. They, oh, they have a very specific style going. One driver said his girlfriend helped him, so or we at least think because he had a really clean and nice pad. So. Oh, I caught that last interview uh, yeah. for Watkins Glen. Yeah, he had some real nice uh, photos on the wall. And when they're in frames, that's kind of usually oh, how you know that the, that the girlfriend or the wife stepped in. <laughs> <laughs> Slayed out to about a two-second lead over the bear. As you can see on your leaderboard, they last pitted pretty much 14 and lap, uh, 13 and 14, a couple on 15. So the bear able to stretch an extra lap. Keffer will be a driver to watch who dipped down on 12. Rowdy dipped down on 11. So what happened here as we get set to come to the competition caution again we'll fly at lap 23 we're on lap 22 Slade looks like he'll capture the lead and keep it here for the before the competition caution but I don't know he slowed down a whole bunch I don't know if that car didn't turn or nothing but here comes the bear inside battle for the lead and he edges out Slade for the lead right now, as we uh, come around, and any time should be the competition caution, and I don't know, Slade may have a problem. He is dropping back, but right now, uncontested. We'll have to check in with Zane here to see maybe what happened, but right now, the Bear, your leader. And this will do it as far as green flag running. We will hit the competition caution. Caution lights are out field is frozen for the time being so the bear sneaking up there and getting the lead right before the caution parker scored second that 42 for chip ganassi gaming definitely something an issue there for slade yeah. and and if i'm slade this competition caution could not have come at a better time because got to get that figured out stretch the fingers out there sloppy joe you're up to fourth <laughs> there it is. There's See? the emotion. He's trying. He's trying not to let it all out. He's got. <laughs> he's got to keep it. In. Yep. Yep. Just stay calm. You're good. <laughs> Make sure everything's all right. All right. We're gonna take a look here. What happened to Slade? So he gets a little bit high. This is the battle for the lead. And Zane, why don't you walk us through what's going on? What's going on here is I talked about a little bit beforehand. Slade actually practiced with taking just two tires on the first round of pit stops, thinking he would get enough positions. He took that gamble here tonight, and we're seeing what it did for him. It put him back in third when he was up front running the race. Very interesting, because I know four tires is a, is a driver's best friend. And to take two is gutsy, and right now it's paying off, because look at Slade on the bottom, underneath Parker for second. Parker in the Credit One Bank 42, leading that outside lane that we haven't seen come to life pretty much all night long, and it's gonna try to get back to the bottom. Look out, contact. The eight gets squirrely, moves up the racetrack. That opens the door for Sloppy Joe, Hot Rod, Kyle Arnold all there. And we've got a wreck in the back of the field. Caution is out. And it looks like Sloppy Joe's in it. Oh, heartbreak for the eight. Getting word from race control that uh, Sloppy Joe just said, Parker, that was all on you, buddy. So blaming the 42 for what happened. We'll take a look again, but boy, it just was a chain reaction after contact. And Sloppy thinks it's Parker's fault. Interesting. So this first caution, actual caution of the day. Here's a look from high above. Parker in that blue 42 chopped down there on the eight. The eight goes backwards and then it's just Drivers checking up, and it just, sometimes you have nowhere to go. Tough break. Oh, that's one of the tricky things about our sport is, is really just being a victim of, of circumstance. And yep. I thought that eight had saved it, and, and I think he thought he did too, yep. but ultimately it came back to, to send him into the wall. And the closing rate too is just unbelievable for those guys in the back had nowhere to go. So we're going to reset, restack them, and resend them into turn number one here as the green flag is back out. 
Lots of pit stops did happen under the caution. A good chunk of the field did. Sixth on back, taking tires and fuel. Top five did stay out, so we've got fresh tires from the back coming to old tires in the front. Boy, this should be good as they're side by side, almost three wide for second place. Now two wide. Bumper to bumper as the 42, Parker leading some of his first laps all season. Boy, if you're gonna have a turnaround, Chip Ganassi Gaming, this could be it for Parker. They have not had the season they've wanted to have. Fighting to get above the cut line in the championship points. And boy, if you're gonna do it and get a win, that'd be incredible. And right now that 42 is rolling as everybody battles in the back. He just wants everybody to battle behind him. And battling they are almost, I don't want to say too much, but I worry <laughs> that if they don't get off of each other, we're going to see uh, another big one. Sheriff is knocking on the door, hopefully now with his steering wheel and not his boot. <laughs> if you missed that in the pre-race, Kyle Arnold also is a sheriff in Georgia, had to serve a knock and warrant to kick a door down or something like that. Zane had more on that, but it was pretty interesting to see. And uh, so he missed practice, but for good reason, serving the community. And so now he's taking that mantra of knocking on the door to the lead because he's got that camo livery of the Geico Chevrolet working that outside lane in the top five. Currently fourth as Parker continues to lead. He's now led four laps on the event. Slade getting a big run there in that 21, the white car. One car on the outside is dropping like a rock. That's hot rod. Wow, pole sitter. Now two seconds back in 14th, so he's out of the mix with 17 laps to go. The lead tightening up, though, for Parker. He's got company. Slade, voltage, rowdy from the back. Zane, what do you got on the 42? Big run for him. This isn't the first time he's been in the lead. This it won't be the last. He could actually win the race today. During practice last night, the man was up front for about 40 laps. And he was, and now he's getting passed by Slade. Here comes the young gun with some help from the 20. What is this, a draft track? I Play don't track? know. It looks like they shades of Daytona here as the 20 gives a shot to the 21. And Slade, the young gun, 17 years old, youngest driver in the field, takes the lead, leads his first laps tonight. But I don't think this is over yet, like Zane mentioned. This is. Parker, Rowdy, Voltage all having a shot as another pass for the lead. This time, Voltage wants in on the action. Here we go, folks. 15 laps to go. Buckle your seatbelts. Side by side for second. Rowdy has it. Slade wants it. Slade's going to tuck back in behind the 47. Riding on board with Voltage, your new leader. Started back in the sixth position, bought his time, and it's paying off. My oh my, so we've got a great race shaping up for you folks at home. 14 laps to go, now 13. Here comes the eight. Sloppy Joe, the green machine, he called it in the pre-race show. Got marred back in that wreck, but he's not done. He's a man on a mission. Look at that. Thought about taking the three wide, did not. As your battle for the lead continues to be the 47 of Rowdy and Voltage. Remember the 47, JTG Throttlers, they already have a win. They won Xbox with track bar. Can they go two for two? Look out. The 47 got loose and we're three wide in turn two. Off the corner, down the back straight away. Looks like the eight of Sloppy Joe takes the lead. From worst, almost worst, to first after an early wreck. RCR. Are you for the lead? Yeah, isn't that nuts? <laughs> this, is, this is amazing. 
was gonna say, it, you don't have to be speechless. <laughs> I just can't. She, well, she's I'm staring loving. at the screen like, oh my <laughs> gosh, what's happening? I'm so invested. This is this is what happens it's when you're a really be. big fan as yeah. well. You know, you, you have to remind yourself, hey, you're working. Talk about what you're watching. Oh, look at that. Thought about going below the white line, the 95 of the bear. He's gonna tuck in behind Sloppy Joe. Sloppy Joe, we documented it in the pre-race. <laughs> and I just got probably the coolest phrase from our producer, Kara, Sloppy Joe, or the bear, hungry for some Sloppy Joes. That's pretty good, and I already butchered it. That's why I don't do that. That's why, that's why I just don't do it. It's all right, the delivery, it was, it was, was there. so bad, that's why I'm not a stand-up comic. <laughs> Side by side again here. This is the 95 of the bear on the outside of Parker. Parker, whoa, slow down. And he dips down onto pit road. Thought about it. I think he's trying to do a little fake, but Parker takes the 42 down pit lane. As you can see on your leaderboard, a few blue markers indicating drivers on pit road as we ride in house with Sloppy Joe. 13th to first. Really anxious to see what these top guys do here when it comes to uh, yeah. pit strategy for the last couple laps. Only a few have pitted so far. I saw Pennzoil, who was two laps down, he pitted, I think he had an issue. He already has two pit stops. But uh, right now you had two, three drivers on pit road. Parker, Hot Rod, your pole sitter. Jobes is on pit road for Hendrick Motorsports. Boy, that number eight at RCR stable, making that car five lanes wide, trying to take the air away from the Bear 95. But right now, I think everybody's coming to pit road, and they are. You hear them get down on the RPMs, trying to get it low down before they get to pit road, and they all do cleanly. So here we go with strategy. Eight laps to go. It's a mad dash to the finish. Back on board with Parker. First car lap down in seventh as we cycle through pit stops. Your top five are on pit road, so that will change. Riding on board now with Jobs. First top five was last week at Watkins Glen. He had Chad Knaus, crew chief of the 24 in the Cup Series was taking in some of the E NASCAR Heat Pro League action and cheering on Jobs, had a good run, and can he keep it going? Started 14th, he takes over the lead after cycling through pit stops. Seven laps to go here at Chicagoland Speedway. They were slicing and dicing. Now pit strategy coming into play. Jesse, who you think's got it? Oh man, I hesitate to make a prediction, quite <laughs> <I know>. honestly. <laughs> it's any, I mean, honestly, it, it came down to those pit stops and now how everything's going to cycle through. They aren't as close as they were in Xbox, so look at that. Now, 1.2 seconds, 2.1. Well, and before that pit cycle, 1, 2, and 3 were within a second of each other, so yeah. uh, my answer then would have been probably very different than it is now. <laughs> I'll have to see if we can kind of bunch up the field a little bit, make these last five laps. Um, just as exciting as the other race. This is a sweet 360 can at full speed around Chicagoland Speedway. That was awesome around the Bears. We once again go back in-house with Sloppy Joe. Sloppy had the lead. He was 13th. He was 10th. He was 13th. He was 6th. He was 3rd. Now he's back to 3rd. So he's been all over the place working that RCR Chevrolet ZL1. How about that run, though, for him after being 2nd last week, 3rd right now this week, and he's just right now trying to get some help to get to the front because it's all the bear for Levine Family Gaming in the 95. Said he loves these tracks and it's showing. But Jobs isn't giving up. Four laps to go, that lead went from 1.5 to 1.3. Let's uh, check in with Zane and get a, get a better idea of what exactly went down on those last pit stops. Zane, what you got? Allegedly, the bear took only fuel. I can't confirm no it because his crew chief won't tell me. He's like, that's not for you to know, that's for you to find out, buddy. So here I am begging his crew chief to find out, was it four tires, two tires, or fuel? Looking at the numbers, though, and playing a little bit of mathematician, 
Bear and Sloppy Joe went in the pit road at the same time. Bear is now 2.8 seconds, I think, or 2.1 seconds ahead of Sloppy. Only way that's going to happen is no tires and two cans of gas to get you to the end of this race. I mean, that's incredible. That is absolutely incredible if that is true because tires are so important here. Four times wear. I mean, they wear four times faster than they normally will. To go that stint, what a call if it pays off. And he's led 19 laps tonight. Two laps to go is the bear from victory here at Chicago Land Speedway. Unbelievable. Well, in almost a two second lead. So far, it looks like it's paying off if he can just keep it straight, hold on to it. A few more left turns, and this looks like this one might be his. Coming to the white flag is the bear as below on your screen is Sloppy Joe to second, but he's two seconds back. He's got to hope something goes wrong with the bear. The bear, we're getting word, possibly took no tires on that pit stop, trying to hang on for Levine Family Gaming to get them a win tonight, and it would be the Bears' first win of the season. He's got three top fives. He's been close in second, but off of corner number four, the Bear, Tuscaloosa, Alabama pride, takes the checkered flag. How about that payoff? As the Bear gets the win, Sloppy Joe, 13th to second, second again. Ugh. Second again, but hey, high risk, high reward yep. for the bear. And um, it, we might. Do you think this will mean that we'll see some big risks then for the rest of the season? See I how would that have paid to, off. I would have to imagine. I mean, nobody would have predicted, and we'll have to ask him about that pit stop. Unbelievable, but nobody would have predicted the bear to do that on pit road as he takes the win. We look at your unofficial results. Sloppy Joe again, a bridesmaid once again in second. Slade. Good run. Again, another consistent run for Wood Brothers Gaming and Slade coming home third. Parker, a fantastic showing for Chip Ganassi Gaming. They needed it coming home fourth. Yeah, Job's finishing there in sixth. And don't underestimate that finish. He started 14th, so incredibly impressive. And you see seventh through eighth. Kyle Arnold, we were talking about him earlier, uh, knocking at the door, but he finished 10th. So the Sheriff comes home with the top 10. There's the look at the back half, back portion of the field. Hot Rod, your pole sitter. Yikes, not a good run for him. In 11th, Pennzoil had some interesting strategy, had a little bit of a problem, and then we saw Rowdy with major damage and rounding out the field fast fed, who was strong early. So unfortunate run for Go Fast, but your winner and the man who grizzlied his way to the front with some awesome pit strategy is the Bear, Tuscaloosa, Alabama's own amateur arm wrestling champ, but right now he's a winner in the NASCAR Heat Pro League round number five in Chicago land, and we've got him on the line. Congratulations, sir. You have to tell everyone at home, how did you do it on pit road, and what call did you make to get yourself that lead? Well, you know, we started out right there. We got that caution right there in the middle of that cycle, and I wanted to go ahead and get four tires on it. Crew chief, Ronnie, made a good call there. Go ahead and take four. Fill it up with fuel and uh, take two tires at the end and go ahead and take it on home for the win there. So two tires at the end for the win. How was it hanging on to that machine there at the end? Yeah, uh, well, loose. That's all I can tell you, just loose. <laughs> I was holding on to it for dear life. It was just enough to get the job done there. Bear, congratulations. Thank you for chatting with us. Congrats on the first win and can see how the rest of the season goes. Oh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Like I said last week in my uh, post-race interview, we ain't going nowhere no time soon. Levine Family Games here to play. Let's do it. Fighting words from the Bear. Congratulations, my friend, and we will see you in Indianapolis in two weeks. Thank you, guys. Thanks for everything you guys do. You guys rock. Oh, we appreciate it. So, with all the points tabulated, the event team or the event win and the team that got it done, RCR, how about that? Sloppy Joe's finish there of second, getting the job done for the event win and locking themselves in the postseason. So a much needed win for them as they jump above the cut line when we restack the uh, event win their points, but they'll jump above the cut line. So as you can see, the playoff cutoff in that top 10 Getting oh so close. Four points there was the difference, but now RCR will jump ahead with 
that event wins. So Hendrick Motorsports, you're uh, you're on the clock for getting yourself above that cut line. This is huge for RCR, just the fourth team now to lock themselves into the playoffs. And we can't underestimate how important that is given that we're now halfway through the regular season. Big move for RCR. And like you said, now all eyes are on Hendrick. But when we talk about consistent RCR apparently is throwing themselves a party in the chat room after finding out of the event win. As you can see, it's a big deal to get event wins here. And again, hats off to that team as we go ahead and look forward to next week. My home track, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The greatest spectacle in racing is Indy 500, but boy, these guys may put on an even better race in the NASCAR Heat Pro League because it's going to be nuts. Indy has a lot of room to play on that track, yeah. so I'll be anxious to see uh, when the gloves come off what it looks like. Wednesday, July 24th, mark your calendars. 7.30 will be right here, and it'll be an incredible night of racing. For Jesse Punch, I'm Chris Wilner. Thank you for joining us here. E-NASCAR Heat Pro League. Round number five is complete. Three more races to go until the playoffs. From everyone here at 704 Games and the crew, we want to thank you for joining us on Facebook and Twitch. Don't forget, July 24th, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. From all of us here, have a great night.